The story goes, uh, in 1970, Jim McDonald down on the Wellington City Council was put in charge of the council quarry. And as such, uh, he was concerned about the badly run down plant and what sort of equipment could be supplied to do the, the job uh, satisfactorily. The conventional wisdom would have said, buy a second hand three foot Simon's cone and that would have fixed it pretty well. But uh, uh, he thought in terms of what could be made in the council workshop that would uh, do the job. Now, Jim McDonald was a remarkable character. Uh, he went to sea as a young man at the start of the war, 1939 or thereabouts, and worked his way back to England where he joined the Royal Navy. Uh, and he had uh, experience as a surf lifesaver here down from Wellington. And uh, he was a strong, husky lad in his early 20s, joined the Navy in England. And at that time, they were putting together the motor torpedo boat uh, squadron, which is uh, small launches, basically, with aeroplane engines in them and a couple of torpedoes on them. And they would go out and attack the uh, German shipping going down the French coast and uh, past Holland and so on. It turned out to be New Zealand's most decorated naval officer. Yeah, a, a DSO, a DSC, that's a Distinguished Service Cross with two medals. So that altogether makes four uh, it, it earned four medals in effect, and also a Royal Humane Society commendation for saving life at sea. The first idea came from this, the idea of a chute which is lined with stone. A normal chute in the quarry with stones going down it has a steel floor and that steel floor wears out. By putting up standing angles on the steel floor, uh, there is a uh, wear resistant surface and that lasts a long time. So Jim thought that was a great idea. The other idea he had was if you bang stones together hard enough, they will break. So uh, putting those two ideas together, he wanted to rotate a chute which he saw as a trough uh, and that would get the stones accelerated up to speed and that they could break in a breaking chamber, which I think he thought originally had, would have anvils, but he put it inside a 44-gallon drum. Jim made a rock-crushing machine with a spinning rotor, uh, the equivalent of the, the trough that he had been thinking about. And they started it up in the Saturday morning in the, uh, in the qu uh, quarry and it ran for about 10 minutes and they got some stone into it and then there was an almighty bang and the piece that we would know as the block holding the tip flew off and put a big dent on the outside of the, <laughs> of the machine and um, that might have been the end of the story. It was a Saturday morning, they were disappointed that it hadn't uh, gone longer but what did they find out the bottom was remarkably cubical chip all the way down from the big size right down to the small. The idea of a good chip meant that there was a, something special about this machine. So he then got it designed through the council drawing office. They uh, then got a, a better designed machine with decent bearing assembly and uh, ran a contract and it's that stage that I heard about it. Now the, the tip situation at that time was they tried all sorts of hard materials for tips, uh, hard welding and so on, hard facing. And uh, the most practical he had found was nigh hard castings, uh, which is a very hard cast iron and very wear resistant. 
with the machine operating in the quarry, they had to change the tips every two and a half hours. And they got a bit sick of being <laughs> heads down, changing the tips inside the, this machine. Jim was a bit disillusioned at that stage uh, and thinking that uh, he would uh, not renew the or carry on with the patent. He had a provisional patent taken out at that time. And um, then I came on the scene. And uh, so he decided to renew the patent. Nobody else in the quarry industry had taken in the interest much and he was surprised and discouraged by that. Uh, but uh, when I turned up from Winstones from Auckland, uh, that sort of um, brought it back to life and we together uh, thoroughly enjoyed each other's company and uh, did a lot of what if we do that, what will happen type discussions. Uh, I was able to get uh, one made at the in the, my company in Auckland and uh, we did some experiments on that uh, and we could burn out a rotor in about 10 minutes flat. <laughs> <laughs>